Hi guys, welcome to Para Women Radio. I'm Amy uh, Cindy Watts, the mother of Chris Watts, the infamous for unaliving his pregnant wife Shanann and their two daughters. In his early interviews following the trage- in her early interviews following the tragedy, Cindy shockingly blamed the victims for their own deaths, blaming Shanann claiming Shanann was responsible for the tragedy. Cindy shockingly blamed the victims and claiming that Shanann was responsible for driving Chris to commit such heinous acts. However, she gave a recent interview and many people are curious to see if she has changed her tune or if she remains steadfast in placing the blame on the victims. It's going to be interesting to see if Cindy has changed her to her or continues to deflect responsibilities away from her son. One thing for sure is for sure, this case continues to captivate us all and spark debate on family dynamics and personal accountability. So I'm gonna roll the credits and I'll be back in just one second. Where they were when she came storming out? Yes. Uh, No, Bella, Dylan, Cece Cece were in the bedroom. And she came storming out saying that I tried to kill Cece. And... I went back there and I got Dylan and I told her, I said, come on. Um, uh, Shanann doesn't want you back here while they're sleeping. And Shanann said, well, they won't go to sleep if she's back here. And, and I said, come on, Dylan, let's go. Let's go. And I got Dylan, I mean, Dalton, and we just left. Yep. We left. Mm -hmm. We just left. And that was the the end of it from from what I can remember. Yeah. Okay, you guys. So that was Cindy Watts recounting what happened the day of Nutgate. Um, In her past interviews, Cindy Watts has consistently defended her son, Chris Watts, and minimized his actions, even in the face of overwhelming evidence She's also been critical of her daughter-in-law, Shanann Watts, blaming her for the breakdown of their marriage and painting her in a negative light, even after her unaliving. Cindy Watts um, confidently attributed the tragic deaths to the victims, implying Shanann's actions led Chris to commit the crime. So today we're going to be analyzing her shifting perspectives from her early interviews to her most recent interviews to see if any of Cindy's opinions are changing beliefs. Um, But before we do that, I thought that we could, you know, maybe start a little dance party. You know what I'm about to ask. Put your dancing shoes on. Shake what your mama gave you. Put your little fingers up onto the keyboard and start hitting the heart and the thumbs up button. Just, you know, start this little virtual dance party that helps me go out into the algorithm and dance out there and bring more people back to the party. It's just a free way to help my channel out and it's really appreciated. So go ahead, crank up the tunes. I'll wait a second. Just hit those light, that like button and those hearts. Um, we're coming to you from YouTube. Hi, YouTube, Facebook. Hi, Facebook and X. Hi, X. And hi to everybody in the replay. Hi to everybody in the chat. So let's make this live extra special. If you can give a little bit more, we're now monetized. So you can hit that little dollar sign down there. Um, Give me a super chat, a super sticker. Every little bit helps me improve my lives and my videos. And I love you for any and all support that you give me. Okay. Let me pop over into chat and say hi to everybody over there. Hi, Tabby Cat. Hi, Sherry. How are you ladies doing today? So I wanted to talk about the other woman. We've been talking about 
one of the other women in Chris Watts's life. We've been talking a lot about Nicole Kessinger. And I thought we'd talk about the first other woman in Chris's wife, life, which was his mother. And um, she did a recent interview with Seeking the Truth with Dave in January. And I thought we would listen to that. But first, I wanted to listen to one of her first interviews she gave so that we can kind of compare and contrast. Um, I have mixed feelings about Cindy Watts. I'm not going to lie. Uh, a lot of the things that she says and does appalls me. But I do have sympathy for her and empathy for her because as I was getting ready with this live, I, I thought a lot about like, what must it be like to have birthed a monster? And I know he doesn't like to be called a monster, but I think what he did was monstrous. And to me, he's a monster. So what would it be like to have birthed a monster? I mean, I, I know she must feel immense responsibility. Uh, the weight of the world must be on her shoulders. So in that, I have sympathy for her. She did lose three grandchildren. So yeah, I do have sympathy for her, but I also get very angry with her uh, in the way she has handled this. But I don't know how I would handle things. I, well, actually, I know I wouldn't handle it the way she handled it, but... I mean, I say things that are wrong, too. So let's see what she has to say. Let me get my my um, screen ready for you guys. Okay. As always, we won't watch the entire video, but this one is only 22 minutes long, and I think we will watch this entire video, but I'll stop and start it. I will put the link down in the description so you can watch it in its entirety. Everything that I say is my own opinion, my own research. I urge you to go out there and do the same. Make sure you can see the screen. Let me move myself around too. I like to hang out down in the bottom when I do this. You dislike Cindy? Mm, yeah. Yeah, I can understand that. I, I really can. Hi, ladies. It's good to see you. Okay, so here we go. This is Para Woman Radio, and I'm Amy, and we're going over. The other other lady, the first other lady in Chris Watts's life, the, the lady that I'm sure wishes is the only lady in Chris's life. And really, she's probably the most important lady again now in his life. I mean, I'm sure he has girlfriends, but they're the ones that put the money on his book. So I'm sure she's the most important lady. And that probably makes her happy. But to get through it. I just don't know how to get through it. <sighs> Tell me about his childhood. Did he play sports? Was he in scout? If I had to um, guess as to a possible diagnosis, I would put Cindy Watts as having a lot of borderline personality traits. Um, and those people can be very difficult. They have to be the center of attention. The world has to revolve around them. Even when they're, you're revolving, when it seems like, you know, you're their world, you're, you're still <laughs> revolving around them, whether you know it or not. And I, I would put her as more like that. I grew up with a lot of borderlines. And so I think... I recognize it, but I would never diagnose anybody. That's what kinds of things did Yes, did he, he do? played sports. He played sports from the time he was five years old up until he was 17. And he was in basketball. He was in baseball. He was in football and uh, loved NASCAR. He and his dad went to the NASCAR races all the time. 
uh, loved sports, loved sports. And he had, he, he was a good kid, uh, had two best friends and that's who he grew up with and still are friends with them today. And uh, there's nothing, nothing that would have predicted any of this could have ever happened. Yeah. Nothing. I mean, I know I've heard a lot of things about Cindy and I don't know if any of them have been confirmed about like how she was with him growing up. Like I, I've heard rumors that he would lock himself away in the bathroom just to get away from her and she would be underneath the door with, you know, asking what, putting her mouth underneath the door and asking how he was and what, what he was doing and what was wrong. Um, I don't know if, has that ever been proven that that's true or is that just speculation? Nothing in his childhood at all. I would have never in a million years thought something like this could happen to him at all. You didn't see things like him getting into fights? Or... No, no, no fighting. Uh, and was... I do remember a friend of Chris's growing up came on and said that Chris was very domineering growing up, like very domineering. And he liked to see people um, in emotional pain quiet and he got along with people and he didn't start anything and he and we just he, watched a video um i think it was the last one we did um on an anna darko employee um and they said that chris was a hothead that surprised me that's why some like i don't you know you, it's all hearsay it can't be proven because do you but i mean a hothead why does a hothead surprise me he just unalived he unalived his entire family i don't know why that surprises me he was um a perfect teenager tell you the truth he did not even rebel he wanted to go to nascar tech we made that possible for him what did he do after he finished school he worked at the dealership as a service technician and was making good money and loved it. He bought a, uh, a toolbox and he started buying his tools and uh, um, enjoyed it. He yeah. was doing well. When and where did he meet Shanann? They met and he liked her, she liked him, but it didn't, I don't think that it was love at first sight or anything. They. She has to throw in that, but she liked him. He liked her, but, but it wasn't love at first sight or anything. I mean, it just wasn't anything special. I mean, it's just something that happened. I mean, it changed the whole course of his life, but it was nothing special or different. They took a little while and I guess got to know each other and, you know, dated. I'm feeling a little sarcastic today, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm having pain issues. And when I'm in pain, I get a little extra snarky. So please forgive me for my snark today. Just enjoy it. I, in my heart, I, I do have, I do try to be good in my heart. Uh, it was always a little, a uh, little strange that she always said a lot of things about Chris in front of me that I didn't like. Just like you say a lot of things about Shanann in front of the world that maybe is inappropriate. This isn't the kind of person I would date. Uh, he doesn't know how to do this or he doesn't know how uh, to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. He looks like a, yeah. Um, Sherry. Yes. Right? He was never close to his mother. He was close to his father. Like when the crimes happen, he didn't want his mother there. And he's to this day, I don't think he's even told his mother or his father what happened. It's just, whew, it's hard. Um, she never accepted the murder that he murdered, that he murdered his family. I know. Right, I have such a hard time remembering these words that we got to say on YouTube. Um, he got in trouble, like, wait, 
He got in trouble like his brother as a kid's son, too. Wait. He got in trouble like his brother as a kid, son, too. Who's he? Who's who, who's Chris's bro brother? Satan's mother is evil as he is. <laughs> Thanks, Tabby. I just, I it took some Tylenol before I started, so it should start feeling better. Um, yeah, I don't believe her at all either. I, I am, I haven't pre-listened to this new, um, new interview she gave in January of 2024. So I am curious to see if she's changing. I, I played a little snippet, but let's, we'll see if she changes her tune. I don't think she did. Dave is still around. He's over on, um, what is it called? Rumble. He's over on Rumble. And so the new interview is up over there and we're going to listen to it. Skater boy. Look at his hair. Look how much stuff he puts on his hair. It's just, it was just on and on and on. And I just got a bad feeling. And they got married in 2012. Did they get married in North Carolina? They did. Mm -hmm. How was that? Oh, we didn't attend. Really? Mm-mm. -hmm. We didn't attend because Shanann and I just couldn't get along. And uh, I don't, I didn't like the way she, she treated him. What do you know about their marriage and their issues? In this interview where, um, like, he's not even asking the questions. I didn't like the way she treated him. What do you mean? Why did, what, how did she treat him? I mean, like, follow the question. Very little. Very little. You can only observe. I can only observe what, what I saw when... I was around them. Christopher was always seemed anxious, and he, when she needed something, I mean, he would run. He wouldn't walk. He would run. He would get it. He just always seemed to be right there at her beck and call. Isn't that how all relationships in the beginning that when people are falling in love, you you're just there for the person. You want to be there. You want to do things. And she's begrudging Shanann because he wanted to do those things for her. I was married to a guy that was a, the way that he showed his love for me was that he did things for me. And I mean, people that are shy, that's often how they, they express their love is they, he, he my husband, ex-husband wasn't the person for me, but he's still a good guy. Don't get me wrong. And the way he treated me in the beginning was beautiful. And I think it's beautiful when people do things for other people, because you're so used to having to do it for yourself that when you find somebody that can help make your life easier, I mean, that's freaking beautiful. And that, did that seem odd to you? Or? Very odd. It was very odd. I, he just seemed nervous. So how much did you see them over these last six years? Uh, probably twice a year. We would go up there. And did you stay with them? Or? Yeah, we would stay with them and uh, stay a week. In her big house, yeah. Tell me about that she built. Bella and mm -hmm. Celeste. Oh, Bella was just like Chris. Just, just like him, shy, <clears throat> cautious, conservative. Uh, was. They did a lot of too much of the comparison, comparing like, yeah, Cece was a rampage, more like Shanann and Bella was more kind and whatever. But you have to be careful not to pigeonhole your kids into these labels. I mean, because um, they can be more than one thing. They can be a mixture of both parents. They can, you know. Uh, I don't know. A ball of fire. I and mean, she was fearless, completely fearless. She just loved to run, 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 run. So they, they were wonderful. It breaks my heart to know that they're not here. They were beautiful children, beautiful children. What did they call you? Mimi. Mimi, how about mm -hmm. Ronnie? What did they call you? She does light up a little bit as she's talking about the girls. I will give her that. Do you think Chris loves Shanann? Oh, God, he loved her. Yes, I believe he she loved her. She does admit that. That's, I mean, at least she couldn't admit that he was all about her. It bothered her, but at least she can admit it. First, I believe he did. But I think as the years went on, I think it just, being, being in a 
that kind of a relationship, which the social worker even said, they, that marriage should have ended a long time ago. She means pregnancy and... What social worker is she talking about? Is she talking about the the lady that was that spoke for them in the trial, the court appointed oh, she's not a grief counselor. What was she? She was vic oh, she was the victim advocate. That's what it was. Junie, be nice to your little sister. Stop it. Was is that the social worker she's talking about? The victim advocate? Tell you about that. Was he excited? Was no, I don't think he was. I think it was a shock to him, and he said that they have been talking about divorce, that uh, you know they are not, they are not compatible anymore, and he was not happy anymore, and uh, I finally thought he's finally seen the light. And I take it Chris had never been in trouble with the law. Never. He's got one speeding ticket and didn't even know about that. If only he had just followed through with the divorce. If only he had done that. If only he had been, was being truthful with his parents when he wrote that stupid letter about wanting the divorce. And if anything happens, look at his wife. See what happened? I mean, to me, that shows that he was pre-planning whatever the heck it was he actually did. I mean, I believe he did it all personally but i know that some of you believe otherwise but i mean but he did do some of it and i i, I don't know i <laughs> we're reported missing what what did you find out how did you find out who did you who told you i think ronnie called me ronnie called me and said that they're missing and i thought i don't believe it i didn't believe they were missing i believe that she was going to punish chris she was just going to punish him, take the girls, and just punish I'm him. I'm sure he no also, idea. when he told them that he was planning on the divorce, he probably was afraid that she was going to kick him out of the house because that was the first thing she did on that one fight that they had. So he probably was, like, telling his mom that, like, you know, she'll probably kick me out or run away or, you know, like, preparing her for her to do something horrible. Of anything else. Christopher called yeah, baby. and said, Mom, no, no, no. Uh, they're searching the house. And I said, Okay, that's fine. I mean, and I still was not worried. I hadn't, I was not worried. I just thought Shanann had run off with girls. So, walk me through the sequence of events over the next few days. Did you and your husband travel to Colorado? Ronnie did. Okay. Ronnie did. And I mean, Christopher let everybody come in. Her phone is there, her purse is there, everything is there. And because he couldn't get rid no of it. Bed, and there's no Shanann. And um, he didn't have time I to still, get rid of it. I was not worried. You know, I thought she has just gone off and I'm going to punish you for this and you can worry about me. But when Christopher called us and he said, uh, I said, do you want us to come down now? He said, tell dad I need him. Tell dad I need him to come down. I said, what about me? He said, no, mom, just stay. Just send dad. And he picked him up at the airport and they drove to the police station. And I'm sorry and if my son said that they wanted their dad to come down because my children were missing and my spouse, I would have came regardless. You, you're not going to tell me where to stay and where to go. <laughs> no, 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 no. And Chris still didn't say anything to him. Nothing. He had already been interrogated seven hours prior to that. He had already let the police go into his home, oh, poor baby. search everything. Was he tired and hungry? Um, he had, and he was going in for another interrogation. The next thing, after five hours, uh, they called Ronnie and said that uh, your son wants to talk to you before he tells us anything. And that's when. I also want to say that in the beginning, I thought Ronnie was a pretty decent guy, but you know, the more he talks and talks about Shanann, he, he, he's not any nicer. He just comes off nicer. Let me see what you guys are saying over in chat. Um, me too. Oh yeah, the weather. Yeah, it's even cold in Florida. Chris is a carbon copy of her, yep. 
Only Chris knows what happened. Whether we'll get the truth out of him. Yeah, who knows if he's ever going to tell the truth. And it, even if he did tell the truth, is he like, how would we know he's telling the truth? Because he's. Hasn't he given like three? Has it been three? Confessions. It was the one in the police station, the one in prison, and then the one with Sherilyn Cato. Christopher broke down and cried and said, I'm sorry, Dad. He said, I went into a rage and I killed her after she killed Cece and Bella. And he found out where he is and then they wouldn't let him see him. He couldn't see him. And so he was going back to the airport when his the public defender called him and told him to come back. So and that's when Ronnie met his public defender. And so talked to her for a while. And uh, they kept in touch with us and let us know what's going on. And then what was the next update that you got? Was it? The next update I got was uh, Ronnie called Jamie and told him they found their body. And they rushed over here. Nobody told me anything until they walked through the door. And they told me what happened, and I, I just fell to the floor. I just fell to the floor. It was, it was uh, unbelievable. And it's been unbelievable ever since. And what did his attorneys tell you about contact with him? You know, starting with, with his None. arrest. No contact. Everything is recorded. No contact. Uh, no letter writing. Uh, I didn't see the harm in the letter. You know, hi son, love you. Keep fighting. But why should he be able to have the letters when nobody else in the pr in the jail can have the letters? When this is their their protocol, the harm is is that you believe that you are above their protocol. Uh, we are here to support you. What is wrong with that? What can the DA do about letters like this? Why couldn't we just write him a letter? Because it we wasn't were, allowed. We what we were told to do. When they called us to tell us that Chris was thinking of a plea, that he wanted to speak to us about it. And when we got down there, it was a lie. They, he, they wouldn't let us talk to him about anything. And then we had to talk to him through a, a screen and a phone. And uh, he just looked, uh, he, uh, he, he was crying. I mean, he, he, he- I know to this day, they still talk about the fact that they couldn't overnight the letter, that they had to talk to him on the screen, that they couldn't see him in person. How many people's mom and dad are allowed to do that? Is that like, something that every prisoner is allowed their mom and dad's just allowed to pray it in and do whatever and write them letters because it's there's no harm in it he wasn't crying he was you could see the movement in his mouth that when i talk about bella and i talked about there's people. no harm in getting a divorce and just letting your family live see in the memorial service that we had for for them and he asked what kind of what pictures did we use and you know what was the song i just you can see how he was trying to hold back tears. What um, what day was that? Do you remember? Well, we flew in on that Monday. We flew in on Monday, and we saw him Monday night, and then the plea deal was on Tuesday. So Monday night was when they when you wanted to talk to him about yes, it. Yes, yes, and we weren't allowed. And it would have it would have helped us so much to be able to talk to him. I wouldn't have to go through all this now. Everything just seems to be shrouded in secrecy. And 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 just tell us what is going on. Let us ask Chris if it's okay if you talk to us. I just don't like the way it was handled from the very beginning. I don't like the way it was handled. I want to save your life. That's all. We're just here. We're going to save his life. We don't. We don't. We want him to get life in prison. It was like they already knew he was guilty. You did. And they already knew he was guilty because he said he was guilty. Yeah. And this was the end of it. Were you worried about the death penalty being a possibility? No, no, I didn't care about the death penalty. She wasn't worried about the death penalty, but this was his life that they were fighting for. <laughs> Nobody's going to die in Colorado. I don't think anyone has, what, one person? And Colorado is changing. So I, people stay on the on death row forever. There was no, I think you'd be safer on death row. And her parents said they didn't want any more death. So I don't see how the death penalty could have mattered. All I want is the truth. I just want the truth. That's it. And I know Chris he would take responsibility. And I guess... Um, I didn't realize that Chris is in the same prison that Jeffrey Dahmer was murdered in or smurdered in. Did you guys know that? I always think like, okay, well, he's pretty safe. But, or wait, was Jeffrey the one down, he was, was Jeffrey in the one that was down the street? I think, no. Yeah, I think that's what it was. He was in the one down the street. 
Maybe he is. I don't know. I don't know. I just can't see him doing that. What do you think the truth is about how Janan and Bella and Celeste died? Oh, God, I don't know anymore, honestly. I don't know his frame of mind. and I, I don't know his frame of mind. Because why would you plead guilty to something you didn't do? And that's all I want to know. Why would you plead guilty if you didn't do it? If you told your dad you didn't do it? And that's what I want to know. Sir, you're going to go in the back. And they said, well, you'll, be, you'll find all that out. Christopher Stop will it. talk to you when and after he's sentenced. Well, isn't that too late then? I mean, isn't it too late? What if he tells me, no, I didn't do it? I just took this plea deal because they told me I was going to go to jail anyway. I just want the truth. All of us just want to want the truth. That's all. I, but I would like to know what what triggered it. How can a perfectly a normal young and man? And the only he, person normal? that will give you the truth is your son. And that's the person that you need to be badgering every single day if you want the truth. All right, sir. Nobody's talking to you. Right? Well, he was normal, but he wasn't evaluated when he came into the system. He wasn't normal if he did this. Must be bewildering. It's bewildering to me. It is. It is absolutely. How does this happen? How did this happen? And I go back in my mind thinking, was there something I didn't pick up with on Chris? But I can't think of anything except he was quiet. It sounds like in your own mind, you're unsure as to what happened. Yes. Have you, have you reconciled the idea that he could have done all of this? Yes. And that scares me to death. It scares me to death to think that he could have done all of this. And I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there right now. But in, I don't see why he's pleading guilty. I wouldn't. I'd fight. I'd fight to the end. But then you ask yourself, would a normal person put, dispose of the bodies the way he did? And I would have called 911 if it happened like that. What would you say to Chris right now if he were sitting here? If we were by ourselves? If it happened the way that Chris initially said it happened, everybody would have called 911. Cindy? Yeah. I would say, Christopher, I need to know what happened that night. I need to know what happened. I've got, I've got, to, I've got to get these thoughts out of my head, I, what I think could have happened, but I need to know. And I think in time, he will tell me. Probably nothing you ever would have imagined you would have faced. Never. Never. No, and, and not not from the the son that I raised and Ronnie raised and and our children, you know, we just we just did everything for them. We worked for them. We wanted them to have a good good life and education. And we stressed education. Uh, and they they were both doing well. I thought, you know, I knew marriages can be bad, but you can get out of them and, and go on. Amen to that. But I don't know what was going through anybody's mind that night. I mean, I feel too much. I mean, I definitely feel everything way too much and have a conscience that, conscience that I just feel way too much. What do you want to happen now? What would you hope would happen now? Well, I, I want Chris to have his day in court. I mean, I need to know. Uh, I mean, I'd feel wonderful if I could talk to him and he could tell me what happened. And then we can all go on. But if he didn't do it, if he did not do this, then I, I, need to, I, need, I need somebody to defend him. I need someone to defend him if he did not do this. Do they have the evidence? He's my son. I've, I've, got, to do everything I, I've got to do everything I can to help to make sure that, that he is defended properly. But he said this was his decision, so I don't know. There's doubt. I have doubt that he did. I can't see that he did it. I just cannot see him doing that as much as he loved his girls. How do you do that? I just don't see it. How do you I do that? I just can't see him doing it. I just wanted to make sure that he has, uh, I just wanted a defense. I wanted him to be defended. And you haven't had any discussions with his attorneys about this? No. I asked them, do you know what happened? They said, no, we don't. Only person that knows what happened is Chris. Well, then he's told you his story, you know, in the affidavit. They said they would defend him if he wanted to, to go forward, but he said he didn't want to go forward. And the bottom line is you would have likely been part of that discussion with him I before have. you made that decision. That's what I thought we were going down there for. At least let us talk. That about is him. actually the bottom him. line of all the anger. And I wish this and I, I, if he had done this, if she had been included in all of this, what then would she be saying? That's my, like, what would be her excuses then? Because these are her excuses. But if those excuses were all taken care of and she had been part of it, what then? 
would be her upset. It would have made all the difference in the world if they would have just let us talk to him. If he was going to do this, what difference does it make who's, who's listening? But he has our love. He has our unconditional love. I will never abandon my son. He did a horrible, horrible, if, if that comes to pass that he did this, then I still love him. He's my son. And I will always love him. And a lot of people don't understand that. And I don't understand that, why they don't. Well, could you talk a little bit about um, some things we talked about yesterday? You said, you know, I think I think your exact words were, he's not the psychopath next he door. He isn't. He's not the sociopath next door. He's not the psychopath. He didn't kill little small animals. He, he didn't do any of these things. He was he was a good child. Um, that you know. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything that was abnormal about him, except he was socially awkward. You know, he had trouble socializing. But so did I when I was younger. I think you learn that as you grow. And I think he felt a little bit more comfortable and more comfortable in his skin. And he he uh, he just uh, I don't think he just had the right person at his side. I don't. That relationship was toxic from the very beginning. What would you say to Shanann's family if you talk to them? God, I'm so sorry this happened, you know, for both our families, because we both lost everything. You know, they lost a daughter. We lost our son. We lost Your our grandchildren. still alive, Cindy. We all lost. Everybody did. And it. You get to talk to your get son back. still. And and you get precious. to go see him. So, so precious. Yeah. I feel like uh, Nicole Kessinger is a lot like. Cindy, I feel like he was definitely mur marrying his mother if he were to go the NK route. Oh, you're really close then, huh? You gonna go visit? <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, you're one to two hours. Well, that's still close. She will only feel better when Chris goes off on Shanann and blames everything on her. Yeah, that's really what would make her feel good if he did that. I emphasize. Hi, Robert, by the way, I emphasize. I emphasize for the grandparents. She lost grandchildren and her son. Chris is her son. She can't imagine it's true. What parent can? She also lost her son. Yep. I do. I feel exactly that same way. But then she goes and she bashes the victims. That's the problem I have with her. I feel horrible for her. She lost her her son. Well, she has, in a sense, lost her son. But I think Chris is pretty, pretty uh, comfy where he is. He doesn't have to make any big decisions. And I think that's the, just the way he likes it. Um, but, yeah. Oh, you would like to visit him? Hmm. I would like you to visit him too, because then I'd want to interview you. <laughs> okay, so moving on. This is really quick. I'm going to show this really quick, and then we're going to go to the interview she gave in January. But I found this. I hadn't seen this before. Um, it was Cindy Watts, August 14th, 2021. Comments made on a true scam live what Cindy says will shock you. Hold on. I'm going to turn off the music and I will read it. Okay. It says, Cindy Watts, Chris will never cooperate. Cindy Watts, I know Chris. And if we were ever threatened, he will never speak up. Who's threatening them, though? That's my question. Cindy says, I would never have come on this channel if Tammy wasn't a friend. I can't see he could have murdered, murdered his family. I know him. So this was in 2021 that she was saying this. She says, he's gentle. He said what he said in Wisconsin to stop it. He is a prisoner and didn't have rights. He told them what they wanted to hear and what he heard. I don't know what was being talked about, but obviously 
she's still defending him. I never knew Shanann was anything but working at Dirty South. Um, there's been rumors that she was doing illegal things at Dirty South. I can't confirm or deny that. Um, no one would trap. No one would talk to me. We've asked for DNA on Nico. We've asked for his phone. Nothing. They have made. Chris told NK that the baby wasn't his, and he must have told that to his parents too, because they, to this day, I think, want the DNA. But didn't they do a DNA on Nico? I don't know. I thought they did. She says, we wanted to talk again to the public defenders, but no one will talk to us. We have tried, but nothing happens. You have to have influence or money. There is something very wrong in this case. I'll agree with that. She says, he did break up with her the night he, that night he chose his family. What? It would really help if we could see what was being said and what these responses are in response to. She says, something went wrong. What can I say? No one cares. Chris is in prison and is not trying to get out. When Chris had nothing to live for, he wouldn't care. He told us his family was gone and he didn't care anymore. Where's NK? It's all too much. There are, there are people involved that are powerful. Whoa, she's been drinking the Kool-Aid, though, I think. That was in 1921. I'll put the link to this down below. I also wanted to include this really quick. Um, over here on Crime Talk, we talk a lot about like what did the Watts get? And we're gonna we're gonna hear about them taking the ruse checks to court for um that money for the girls. I want I want you guys to hear this. Hold on. Oops. I have said regarding the 12 undeniable truths of life from a criminal defense attorney. Yes. Rule number one, it's always about the money. And when they say it's not about the money, then you know it's yeah, about so. the money. Okay. We'll take a listen to this story. Now, Chris Watts, obviously in prison for the rest of his life, having pled guilty for the death of Shanann Watts, his two daughters, Celeste and Bella, and also his unborn child. He will never get out of custody. It's simply not going to happen. But what has come out recently, and frankly, this kind of flew under the radar. Chris Watts, while working at Anadarko Petroleum, signed up as part of his employee benefit plan for life insurance. And he listed the people covered by the life insurance, not only obviously if he were to pass away, but if Shanann and Bella and Celeste were to pass away. The payout for these three individuals would be some $450,000. Needless to say, Chris Watts will never share in those proceeds. And thank goodness. Now, had Chris Watts got away- It's always with it, interesting to me that Chris Watts is not allowed to make any money off of his crime, but yet we see Miss Gypsy Rose, she's a millionaire off of her crime. Death of Shanann and Bella and Celeste, he would have pocketed some $450,000. But since he was arrested, ultimately confessed, pled guilty, and is serving a life sentence, he is no longer entitled to those funds as a result of the Colorado Slayer Statute, which basically says if you are responsible for the death of somebody who is deceased and covered by a policy and you had something to do with, you obviously cannot profit from that. So the situation then becomes what to do with the money. Well, let me give you a quick lesson as it relates to interpleader. It is a tool that's used primarily by insurance companies. And in this particular case, the insurance company, Zurich American Insurance Company, which was to pay out on the life insurance policy, had multiple claims to those proceeds. Now, the first person seeking the funds to the proceeds from the insurance policy were Franklin Ruzek, which is Shanann Watts' father. And he was doing that on behalf of the estate. So let me give you a quick explanation of 
interpleader. This is a tool that's available under the rules of civil procedure in just as far as I know, every state, as well as in federal court. And in this particular case, Zurich American Insurance Company, the people that had the policy that would have to pay out on the policy said, hey, we're not sure what to do here, judge. We have Franklin Ruzek as the personal representative of the estate of Shanann Watts. We have Franklin uh, Ruzek individually. And then we also have Sandy Ruzek claiming money as it relates to this insurance policy, some $450,000. To make things even more complicated, then you have Ronnie and Cindy Watts, who are obviously Chris Watts' parents saying, no, no, we're entitled to that money. So the insurance company says, hey, hold on. We understand that we have this money and we have to pay it to someone. We're willing to pay it, but it's not our job or our responsibility to decide who gets the money. So Zurich American Insurance Company filed this interpleader action. They list everybody who's making a claim to these monies and list them as a defendant. And then it is upon the courts ultimately to decide who gets money and in what amounts, if any. Now, of course, that doesn't assume that the parties can reach a settlement, which you can do at any time. And you'll hear as the story develops here, that's what took place. There's a lot of interesting issues that come in as it relates to this interpleader action. First, we talked about. I think he could, MK. I really do. I think he has, he's on that, he's on some kind of spectrum for sure. But he's never said it and his parents have never said it. The Slayer statute, which says if you're responsible for the death of somebody, you can't then profit from their death by collecting insurance proceeds. Makes a lot of sense. Well, then who would it then go to? The first thought would be that it would go to Shanann Watts, Christopher Watts' wife. But she obviously predeceased him and she predeceased the children. Now, sometimes in insurance policy cases, it can become very tricky. And I've seen it in, for example, in plane crash cases as to who passes away first, uh, particularly if somebody doesn't have a will, where does it go? Now, normally the beneficiary of the policy would have been Christopher Watts. Had his family died of natural causes in a horrible accident, he would have gotten the money. But since he was responsible for those, he's not entitled to a per statute. So since he has no other relatives, i.e. a wife and children to pass the money onto, then the question goes, would it go to his parents? Then you have the Ruzik saying, oh no, we're entitled to that money because we are the personal representative to the estate and he should not uh, benefit or his family should not benefit in any way by receiving these funds. And as I've stated, this you is the reason. you feel like Chris Watts's family should have benefited in any way from his crimes? Reason why Zurich filed an interpleader. Now this matter didn't go very far. The first filings in this case date back to June of this year. And the order regarding dismissal and disbursement of funds was not until September of this year. Now I'll be honest with you. We follow the Watts case, but we don't follow every courthouse to search for records for the Watts case. But in this particular case, it is public record and we were able to get all of the filings, which are public information. Now the matter did settle and the funds, some $450,000 was made payable to the Rusick's attorney's Holtaf or their trust account for disbursement. And in the motion for the dismissal and disbursement, the parties state that they have all settled. Now, we don't know because that information doesn't get filed with the court. So it's unclear. So it's been settled and we don't know what it was settled for. We don't know how much the Watts got and how much the Rusecs got. Um, it's just been settled. I also thought this was interesting. I'm, I'm almost there, guys. We're, we're coming to the last um, interview. But has anyone read this? The Cindy Watts, A Woman of Strength and Love, A True Crime Case Opinion Essay. Um, Cindy Watts, a woman of strength and love is a true story case opinion essay written to explore the relationship between Cindy Watts and her daughter-in-law, Shanann, pronounced, uh, um, leading up to the early mornings hours of August 13th, 2018. Would anybody be interested in me buying that and doing a review? It's written by Brenda Irish Hunselman. She was a, she's a realtor. Anybody interested in me doing that? If you are just put something down in the comment or in the chat and I will know that you're interested. And now we're coming into the home stretch. You guys could give this live a thumbs up helps us go out into the algorithm, a heart, a thumbs up, any way that you can show that you like me. Um, if you don't like this content, you can even give me a thumbs down and let me know why you don't like it. And if you um, have a little extra to give, we're now monetized. So we do super chat and super stickers. It's that little um, money symbol 
Um, we can do it during lives and after lives. You can, you can show your appreciation by clicking that little money symbol. I'm trying to update my equipment. But any help that you give, um, if you can share, if you subscribe, any little thing that you do for me is just really appreciated. Um, and I'm really grateful. Let's see what people are saying over in the chat. And then we'll go into this last um, interview. So they did DNA on Nico and it, he is Chris's. I thought that was, they did do, and yeah, I thought they did. Um, it's on a video somewhere. Yeah, it is somewhere. I, cause I it does sound very familiar to me. Um, MK says if the mother says her kid is allergic to nuts, then don't let the kid around nuts. Exactly. The mom is the boss in the situation. 100% on that one. MK. Yes. It's about the money. Antisocial. Could Chris, uh, yep. I, I, I think quite possibly. I'm sorry you're having pain, but sarcasm. I'm sorry you're having pain, but sarcasm. I usually honest. CW hated SW from the get go. Cindy sure did, didn't she? I think she just hated her because Chris loved her so much. <sighs> Holding back the tears and it's his entire family gone kaput, right? As far as I'm concerned, Cindy Watts was a horrible mother, horrible mother-in-law. I just cannot even imagine. I got lucky. I had a great mother-in-law. She's still, she's, she's better to me than my own mother is to this day. So I got really lucky. Um, I would have not made it very far with Cindy. I would have clashed with her. The interview is awful. The one that we're about to watch <laughs> or the old one, probably both of them. I don't know. No, I will never be on the mother-in-law. I have two adult daughters with, oh, really? You know, um, Sherry, it's so interesting. You might, I've been watching that. I just started watching Love on the Spectrum and I swear I've been crying. It's just so sweet like so pure this love on the spectrum is just so pure i just like i i'm in love with it i binged a bunch of shows last night and i watched a bunch this morning they might meet somebody sherry i don't i don't know where on the spectrum they are but even to have a, a companion i think we all need to have some kind of companion um oh you are and you treat them like good because really they are they become your own you love your mother-in-law your mother good amazing mother-in-law make it can make it all worth it cindy definitely appears to have mental fragility <laughs> she does and that's a nice way to say it what the what i couldn't have said it better okay so moving on um this is a interview that Dave from Seeking the Truth did with Cindy in 2024. It was just last month. Um, I will put the link. We won't watch it all into its entirety. I'll put the link in the description so you can head over there and watch it on your own. This is Dave's recent interview with Cindy Watts, Chris Watts's mother. Ooh, there's a little intro. Let's see. Up and go. Yeah. I yes. honestly I thought I had it queued up. I'm sorry, you guys. Yes. Honestly. I just want to ask you something before we start. Where um, there's a particular subject I want to discuss with you. Um, 
How much do you miss Shanann, Bella, Cece and Nico? Oh, I miss Bella and Cece so much. I don't, what can I say about Nico? Yep. I, I didn't know him, of course. I miss, you know, the birth of him, all yep. of this. Uh, but Bella and Cece, yes, I miss them so much. Shanann, I do miss her. I do. I mean, I yep. mean, I know people will say all these things about me, but what people don't understand is that, yes, in the beginning, we didn't get along. But in the middle, we did. We got along fine. It was the beginning and the... I'm not really sure if it was fine, like if they got along fine. I think they were just trying to cohabitate with one another because they both loved Chris. Maybe that's what it was because she didn't even say that she missed Shanann. He's like, first, tell us how much you missed Shanann, Bella Cece. And she couldn't say that she missed her. Or did she say it? I didn't hear she say it. I mean, she went right into Bella and Cece. And that everything. Which is fine. Like, if I didn't like somebody in life, when they're when they're gone i'm not going to say that i miss them or that i liked them or i'm probably just not going to say anything and if i do say anything i'll say to somebody i'm sorry for your loss and i won't go into their greatness or their not greatness <laughs> you know what i mean i just don't say anything blew up and i I don't know what to say about that, but we okay, did. Yep, yep. We got along in the middle perfectly. I mean, how could we not go out there twice a year and not get along? We did. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah, right. But, okay. You know, that's it. Thank you, Cindy, for that. I, many people out there will appreciate your honest words. What I would like to um, ask you um, in regards to this letter, okay, that was just, I just read out um, so lovingly. Um, that's my sarcasm, everybody. Um, I just thought I would ask you mainly about because the view, people have pretty much. What said, are we looking at here? What is this with the? What are we looking? Why is half of his screen with this part? What are we? What are we doing here? Do, does anyone know what this is all about right here? It has an R. Is this? Is this the candle? Is this? Cindy, I don't know what that is. What we all call is nutgate being the catalyst um, and the end for Shanae. What are we looking at? Um, I see that it's you know, like got... a nut dish. Is Are we looking at the nut dish? Are we looking at the nut dish and the... Um, we are looking at the nut dish, you guys. We're looking at the nut dish and the, scrape, the scraper. Um you guys, I had a brain bleed and I forget common words. What am I, what am I? Razor, the razor. We're looking at the razor and the um, dish, I think. There was premeditation and there was a motive. That's when Chris pretty much gave up. But Yes, that's what it is. Thank you, Mary Mary. It's the blade that they, that was supposed, I do believe this. I do believe that that's the blade. I don't believe they had razors laying around. I think they did have a blade for the stove because growing up, my my um, uncle worked for a manna and he, that's what they used on their stove. So I, I do believe that. Um, but why are we looking at it and, and the dish? I'm sure that's the nut dish. You and Ronnie. And you described to me, and, we, and we, I play it every day, every live stream. I play exactly where Shanann was when she yelled at you. Uh, but what I would like to first ask you is you went, I believe you went shopping with Shanann yep. prior to, uh, you know, all the kids coming, you know, the, um, you know when yeah, the, the kids were going to be there for the weekend, the cousins were catching first, up, et cetera. Yep, you, very, you went, yep. Very first weekend, we went shopping. The very first weekend she came down here, we went shopping. We got everything. We went to the toy department. We went all around Walmart. We got <sighs> You guys, I'm just starting to do my deep sighs because I'm trying to relax. Like, it's okay, Amy. This is okay. People can have other opinions. It's okay. <laughs> These are the things that I tell me myself in my mind so that I don't have a breakdown. Everything they needed. And... 
honestly, the first weekend wasn't that great because the very last day I had a hair appointment and, you know, I went to it and uh, I had to go by Ronnie's place and fill out some paperwork because we were buying a car and I did leave my phone. I forgot my phone at, at, at the person that did my hair. And I didn't hear, you know, I didn't hear my phone ring, I guess. And uh, and Ronnie told me, shanann has been calling and calling. And I said, why? He said, she's really mad. I said, why? So I called her and she was so angry with me. It really hurt my feelings because I thought we were getting along so great. It hurt my feelings. You know, she said, you left her stranded all alone on a vacation in a little tiny house all day long. That, that's, that wouldn't have made me happy either. And she makes it sound like the reason that Shanann's mad is because she wanted Cindy to watch her children. She just didn't want to be stranded alone in a house in the summertime. And Shanann was a go, 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 go. I mean, she was up at 5 30, 5 o'clock in the morning cleaning her house. I'm sure she wasn't going to sit in Cindy's house and clean it. I mean, what was there really for? Anyway, I'm irritated today. I'm sure that it was both of their issues, not just Cindy's. You left me here. You left me here with these kids. And I'm thinking, Shanann, they're your kids. I'm sorry. I had, you know, I forgot my phone at, you know, at the hairdresser. And, you know, I I, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. And she was angry at me. And that really hurt my feelings so bad. And uh, you know, Frank came and picked her up and, and that was the end of it. But I did call Chris and I said, Chris, I, I think she's mad at me again. You know, and I explained to him what happened. He said, mom, just, just go with it. Just, you know, this is the way she is. Just go ahead and, uh, pretend it didn't happen. You know, just, just go with it. Just gaslight her. Make her think she's crazy. Pretend like it didn't happen. That'll be a good, that's a good, <laughs> that's a good plan, Chris. That'll work every time. Not. I said, okay, all right. You know, I just wanted to let you know I didn't cause any problems. I didn't do anything. <laughs> and, and, right. uh, so, uh, and, and so, so moving point, along, yep, absolutely. Moving along to the, so, but Shanann was with you when you bought the shopping and you bought the ice yep. creams and you bought Everything. this and you bought that. She was supervising what was bought Everything. in regard in regards to what yep. was actually going were, to be present in the house with CC and people, their allergies. There were people in Walmart that I knew and I introduced her in everything. Everything. And uh yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. He had everything CC and Bella could have. Yep. Everything. And yes, I did have some uh, pistachios um, on the counter, but I said, oh gosh, those are for Dalton and just put them on the, on the top of the refrigerator. And that's what she did. It wasn't anything, wasn't a big deal. You know, and the chocolates that Cece got into was my mistake. I, you know, I forgot I had chocolates out there, but obviously she wasn't allergic because Shanann just laughed. You know, she just laughed about it. And I just knew then, and like I always knew, they were and this is also pretty unfair because Shanann's really not here to, I'm sure there was a side to Shanann's story too, and it's definitely gone and missing and she's never going to be able to tell us her side of the story. Um, <sighs> allergic to anything, nothing, not one thing. So I just want to ask now, so on the day of um, Nutgate, which I believe was June the 9th, I think it was, um, July the 9th, I think it was, or yeah, June the 9th, June, July the 9th, I think it was, yeah. it was a Saturday, I believe. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was a couple of weeks later, I think, was um, CC's birthday, or a week later was CC's birthday party. They held it a week later, I believe. Um, yeah. the, um, the ice cream. Okay, so people need to understand that there was certain ice creams that were in the freezer. Now, okay. Shanann was present at the house at the time. Is that correct? Yes. When all of this was taking place. So yes. Cece went over and she went to the freezer because the kids were having ice creams. Is that correct? Uh, no. No? Okay. No. Can you explain I, the ice cream story to us, please? My daughter went and got an ice cream and was eating an ice cream. And Cece 
Cece had a fit. I mean, she was screaming and yelling that she wanted the same thing that my other granddaughter had. And uh, I did say, well, you know, sometimes you can't get what you want. They had ice cream. And indeed, that is true. Sometimes you cannot get what you want. And it probably needs to be taught but is that the moment that you need to teach that sometimes you can't get what you want when you've got your daughter-in-law from another state visiting i just is that the time i i don't think that's the time <sighs> let me just calm down for a minute you guys it just makes me so angry let's see it's the blade oh yeah Oh, you already said that. Sorry. Um, Sherry says, Cindy, you don't be gone. You don't be gone all day when Shane is visiting from when she's yes. When she's visiting from another state to be with you and the grandkids. I mean, and if you are like, give her a vehicle. Is that hard? Leave a vehicle. I don't know. I, I just certainly wouldn't leave my guests alone like that but uh, maybe i'm just somebody different and if i had to leave i would i wouldn't be gone all day and i'd be in touch with them i you know make sure they had my phone number if any uh, yeah i don't believe all that happened this is all bull yes this is all yeah sorry nope it's okay when you have a daughter-in-law come in from another state to visit you don't go anywhere exactly it i i don't know but I mean, you can go somewhere, but just make sure that you make your guests comfortable. I know it sounds like you did a lot of stuff to make her comfortable. It does. It sounds like you went shopping and you did a lot of stuff. But why do you have to fall? Like, it's like she does. She does only so much. And then she's like, nah, not going to do anymore. I don't have to be any more decent than this because I'm as I've been as I was decent to you in the beginning. <laughs> like, I don't know. Thank you so much, MK. Thank you. Yeah, and then they don't even go to the birthday party, right? Mary Mary says, I would have left. Wait, I would. Sorry, it's hard. My, you know what? I don't know why, but my screen is really tiny. Let me make it bigger. When I do this, it, when I make my screen bigger, it makes it smaller. It's weird. I've got my laptop is weird. Mary Mary said, I would have left anything out if I thought they would not have it. Yeah, no, I wouldn't have like, I would have put it away. I mean, it seemed if my, if I knew my daughter-in-law was so like had sent me a letter stating this is what should not be in the house. Don't have it anywhere in the house. I wouldn't have even just had it casually sitting. I mean, it would have been gone out of my house. I would have maybe even put it in a cabinet somewhere locked away, you know, deep in my house somewhere. I don't know if I would have thrown it away, but I would not have even had it like the day they came, the day before they came, I would have just cleared it out. Oh, do you binge watch love on the spectrum? I can't wait to watch more of it. I, I really can. I watch. The first season of The American. That's all I've watched. Now I'm, I see that there's, looks like there's some European one. And then there's the second season. And they're just all cute as a little, you know what? Tabby Cat, thank you so much, honey. Thank you. You have given me a super sticker or super chat since I've been monetized and or every live that you've come into. And I really do appreciate that. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Rhinestone Cowgirl says, you don't get his phone. It's evidence. I mean, ding bat. It's just so weird. Like some of the things she says just really irritates me. And I just have to like remind myself that not everybody says the things that I would say. We all say different things. And yeah. In there, they had their own ice cream that Shanann said it was okay for them to eat. So, I mean, Shanann didn't have to, you know, 
hug her and say, I know, I know, honey, it's not fair. It's not right. I mean, that wasn't the right thing to do. Just go in there and give her her ice cream in a cup, in a bowl, in in something. I mean, what? <clears throat> yeah. So what that's what Shan did when the girls would get upset. I, re I remember watching a cooking video. Um, Bella was upset that she couldn't get the right, you know, the the bowl. I'm angry, so I'm forgetting common words. Ugh, I had a brain bleed, and when I get, like, agitated, I just forget common words, and it's really irritating and embarrassing. But they had the bowls, and um, I remember seeing Bella leaning into her mom, and her mom was comforting. Wasn't, like, giving her the bowl that she wanted, but was like, yes, I know, it's not fair. But, I mean, that's acknowledging their 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 feelings. Like, for me, growing up, when I would get upset, I was sent to my room, and I had to learn how to manage my own emotions. And I'm really crappy at managing my own emotions because of that. Nobody ever let me lean into them and say, yes, I know, it's not fair. It's not fair. Life isn't fair, but we suck it up, and we move about, you, know, you know, just kind of like giving them comfort in their discomfort. I think it's a beautiful thing to do to, for a child. What you've actually got is um, Shanann's present. Okay, this is the whole thing. So why couldn't she go ahead and get CC her ice cream? You know what I mean? Why couldn't she? Why was it your responsibility? Well, that was your house. She's the because, Okay. Because Jamie, brought, my daughter, brought her children over and interrupted her time with us. So Shanann never said this. This These are C Cindy's opinions that this is what happened, that Shanann is jealous of Jamie. And because Jamie's kids came over to see their cousins, which would have made most good mothers happy, which I, I, I just bet that that's when the nuts came out and that's when the ice cream came out and then things probably just changed all of a sudden that's what i believe you know right now because i don't believe that there's any good blood between shanann i think it's worse between shanann and the sister because i think the sister did do things i i do believe that the sister didn't mail those invitations and stuff like that and would test shanann she i think she was the type that got pleasure out of seeing people that needed to be organized and have Now, that is what I believe. Okay, I mean, sir. everything changed when when my other two grandchildren came over. Everything changed. Every her demeanor, everything changed. And so, so Jamie left. So Jamie dropped the kids off, and she left. Is that correct? Far from Absolutely. it. You're right. Okay, so it was you, Dylan, Dalton, Bella, and Cece, yeah. and Shanann. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now. So the ice cream saga has come and gone. There's still no yelling in the house. There's I like no one's yelling and screaming and carrying on. And well, apart from Cece having her little mini fit. All right. Yeah. And then Shanann, did she want the kids to go off and have their afternoon nap? Yes. But my granddaughter went in there with Bella and, you know, was laying down with her because they just, they absolutely connected. Both the grand, my you know, Jamie's kids and 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 Shanann and Chris's kids, they all connected. They were happy together. Of course they, really they were. were. They're cousins. They're kids. That's what you do when you go over to your cousin's house. You go in the room and you play with them. I didn't have very many cousins, but the few that I did, that's what we did. And, and this was the first, like, apart from the first weekend. Okay, um, when they, they, they'd they all been together for the very first time. You wouldn't see them all year long, but on the holidays, that's what you did. You went and played with your cousins. Time when they'd all met. Second okay. week. Yes. So, okay, the, so this is the second weekend when the, the cousins are all together again. Like This is like the second time they've all been together, and they're excited. They're happy. They're, you know, yes. they're all seeing each other, and they're doing they, what cousins do. Is they, that right? Did. Okay, they, that's what I just said. They you know, they don't see this grown up silly stuff. You know, they were kids and they were happy and they were jumping on the trampoline and in the pool and, you know, and uh, they came inside and uh, Shanann said they had to have their nap. Well, Dil I don't want to say my granddaughter's name. No, that's fair. Yep, yep. You know, my granddaughter went in there with Bella and they were 
And she said, no, she can't be in here. I said, why? I said, she wants to stay here with Bella. She said, no. I said, come on, Dylan. She doesn't want you in here. She said, no, please don't. Oh, so that's okay to say that to your, your granddaughter that she doesn't want you in here. Now, well, come on, um, whatever this granddaughter's name is, Bella needs to take her nap. Or Bella's mom wants her to take a nap. Or if Bella doesn't take a nap, she's she she's grumpy. Or Bella's a little bit younger and she needs her nap. That's the truth. You just said you didn't want her in here. So my granddaughter came out and they went in there and then Shanann uh, came out of the room and just started screaming at me. And I am um, just going to press pause for a second. I'm just going to show for a very brief moment, everybody, in case you haven't seen it and you're tuning in here for the very first time, I'm going to show you a five seconds of a video of exactly where Shanann walked out of. Oh, we're not going to watch that. Um, he shows that in all of his videos. If you want to watch that, you can go. Um, I, I for sure will be linking this. You can go and watch it in the link. No, that's... I, I... I do understand that Jamie is trying to protect and shelter, oh, um, you know, them, them from from it all. Yeah. Um, you know, which is which is which is an understandable thing, but they'll grow up one day and they will understand and learn, of and course, you know, they, they they won't be able to avoid it. But they are being sheltered at the moment, which I believe is a very good thing. Well, of course uh, it is, Jamie? Dave. Why would you? Why would you bring the kids into it? Why it's just sad enough that they're gonna have to grow up and it's their cousins that was unalived by their uncle she and her husband and that the family blames the the un, the people that were unalived yep they are going to protect them they are definitely going to protect them absolutely please do and uh, they don't right now they're not asking any questions they have and said I'm their names from the very beginning i think it's delton delton and I know the names. I've heard him say it before. I don't know why all of a sudden, but we'll respect that and we won't say their names. No, no, but they're not asking any questions and I'm glad about that because I really don't want to. You would struggle. Them. I know you would struggle. I would struggle right now because I, I remember how young they were when this happened. And I, I mean, I couldn't believe Shanann said what she said in front of both of my other grandchildren. I yes. Okay, so it's six years later and she's still bashing Shanann. That's the answer to my question. Nothing's changed. I would love to interview Cindy myself. I wouldn't be... I would have different questions I'd ask her. I could not believe she said that. And, and, and they both were frightened. They were frightened. They were scared. They were thinking what in the world is going on and and that was when you left um bella and cc with chat with shanann and you went out with the uh, other two grandchildren you went to a friend's house is that correct friend's house yeah yep. we left yeah we left and and i yeah i remember hearing what my grandchildren were saying to me but you know i don't even want to get into that but yeah uh, yeah, yeah absolutely a uh yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was, I don't know, traumatic or I don't know if that's the right word. I mean, they don't seem to be phased by it. They don't ask any questions, but I know one day they will. Yep. One day they will ask questions, but uh, right now they're, they're not because Jamie has completely just completely sheltered them from all of this. She's, she wants nothing to do with any of it. Nothing. Is that the way to go, though? Because I, I do agree sheltering them and you don't need to bring it up and talk about it all the time. But people, the kids might start making fun of them or they might start saying this and that and they might not tell you what's being said. And so they're going to they're going to listen to what's I don't know. I don't think that's a good idea. That's um, yeah, I I can, you know, I can vouch for that. Yeah. I'm, um, you know, um, the relationship I have with Jamie is very scarce and very sparingly yeah. and, and very rarely do we ever communicate. And, you know, um, you know, she's trying to, you know, move on and be the best mum she can. And, she's and, and, and her husband's being the best dad and the kids oh. are being the best kids. And you know what I mean? So, they, you know, those two are, 
Well, of course, that's everybody's trying to be the best that they can be. What's the point in that, though? The point are you saying is that she's moving on because she's trying to be the best person she can be? Is that what he's saying? A wedding. She kicked Jamie out of it. And she, is that because she believed Jamie didn't post the invitations? Is that the. Nope. She believed that Jamie, Jamie couldn't get off work. Yeah. There for every little thing for a week. And, and, and Jamie said, you know, I'll get my nails. Tell me what color nails, you know, and I'll get them done here, you know, but I just can't make it for every, you know, every little thing. And, but um, yeah, I know, she didn't want Jamie to be in the wedding. She wanted her friend in Colorado to be in the wedding, to be her maid of honor. And she wanted her kids to be in the wedding. And that is, it, it, that's exactly what happened. So I. Oh, the other, the, the invitations for the engagement party. That that's is, right. Yes, that's right. Yeah. It's yeah, of course. I mean, I called every single person and none of them were able to make it. None of yep. them, none of them were able to make it. So what, what are you supposed to do? It's, it's not true. Nobody came to her bridal shower because they obviously didn't want to be there. Only her that's, one that's friend okay. thing and that was it. Yep. What These are the type of that? things that you can't argue with Cindy about because I have no proof of any other, only that what Shanann and her mom was saying. And I just, I don't know why this is even being discussed because Jamie doesn't want to talk about it, but Cindy will talk about it. It's uncomfortable. So you've explained, yep, you've explained the wedding. Okay. All right. Yeah. My family and, was there. Yep. Okay, so going to the birthday party. The birthday party, Ron, I wasn't going to go. I already knew I was not going to go after she accused me of trying to kill uh, a CC. I said, I'm not going, but Ronnie, you can go. And so he was going until that morning he started posting, you know, about what had happened. And Ronnie said, oh, my gosh, she is, she really doesn't want us there. She does not want us there. This is why she's doing this. She's posting about everything that already happened. That, And Ronnie said, I'm not going. I'm not going to go. Well, that's fair enough because I mean, I've explained I've explained it here on my channel know, many but, times that, you know, like, that's the reason because people, she started posting. I know, but a lot of people, maybe, I mean, a lot, some people just go and do it, you know, and I don't know, I'm, I'm not like that. I'm just not. If you know, I uh, I don't know what to say. You no, know, I do know yeah. Ronnie has told me oh, just one moment. The and he the regrets it. And the birthday party. I mean, all of these things we didn't go yeah. to. I know we didn't go to because we weren't welcome to be there. We obviously know that you're willing to skip. Oh, Junie willing to skip major occurrences like a wedding so what's your granddaughter's birthday of course you weren't gonna go if you didn't feel comfortable you you just don't go that's your mo how how can you go to a place that you're not welcome to be there i, I couldn't go to the wedding we weren't welcome we couldn't go to Bella's uh, Cece's birthday because we were not welcome there and into the funeral. I, I don't see why people don't, don't see that. I, maybe we should have been braver and just did it, but how can you do something like that? When in my mind, in Ronnie's mind, we believed that Shanann killed the girls. That's what we believed. Yep. Oh. We believe. Is and she saying believed I, or believe? I, I don't know how you do it. Did she say believed or believe? I, I'm sorry. I got to take that back. Believe. And I, I, I don't know how you believed. We believed that Shanann killed the girls. That's what we believed. Yeah. We believe. Okay, so she said we believed twice, but then on that last one, she said we believe. And 
I, I, I don't know how you do it. And, but we did have June, our own out. service. I know we probably did a lot of things wrong. I don't know what is the right and wrong thing to do. I just, we just did what we felt was right. You know, if that's wrong, then people. Well, I want to say a big thank you for your bravery. Well, uh, for coming here today is, and explaining um, this in detail, I, it needed to be heard. It needed to be said. She is unwilling to admit that that was the wrong choice to make. Obviously, Ronnie says that he regrets not going to the birthday. She, to this day, cannot say. She, she, she has a really hard time admitting things. I would say... Cindy is probably like, and I'm going to be generous here. She's about 25% better than she used to be. I would put her at like 25% better. And I would put Ronnie at the same spot too, because Ronnie still says negative things about Shanann. In fact, he says more negative things than I've ever heard him say about Shanann. So if anything, he could be at like 50% better, but because he still partakes, because he says more, in my opinion, that it's just yuck. Yeah. Yeah, it's like trying to make sense out of the senseless. That's what I feel like I'm doing here, is like making sense out of gaslighting trying to like add one and one and it keeps coming up to a million <laughs> trying to say no it's only two but yeah let me make sure i showed everything i wanted to oh you guys let me know if you want me to get that little um Cindy Watts, a woman of strength and love, a true crime case opinion. I'm going to start comparing the three women in Chris's lives. I'm going to do Shanann, NK, and Cindy. So we're going to start doing deep dives on all three of these women in Chris's life. I'm. We've talked a lot about Chris, and so now we're going to start talking about the women in his life. Um, we might even throw Jamie in there. I think that's all I have. Let me just do one quick. I had some news articles. Did you guys want me to read? I had this news article that was, I mean, I've gone way over an hour, but this Chris Watts parents, Cindy and Ronnie Watts, five fast facts you need to know, or should I make that? Um, actually, you know what? I'll put that in an, our next deep dive. I'll do something with Cindy and Ronnie together. Yeah, I'll do that. Because I've gone way past the hour. I know when I see lives that are like longer than an hour, I have to really be in the mood for it. So I don't want to put that choice on, make you guys have to choose that. <laughs> all right guys i think that's all i have let's see let me head over to the chat real quick i appreciate you too honey um why wouldn't grandma cindy kick oh wait i'm way up there sorry we already went through this Cindy and Ronnie demanded part of the life insurance. I know. We I know we listened to that news article in the middle. It's it's just shocking to me. I don't think they they deserved any of it. But I mean, because they didn't even have to pay for the burial or anything. It was the roost checks that had to do all that. I I don't ugh. but I'm sure they did it just so that they didn't have to deal with it. Um Frank and Sandy. They probably just didn't want to deal with it. I have a really exciting um, thing that I'm getting together. It's going to be a cooking show and I have a chef coming on and we're going to cook some of Sandy's and um, 
Shanann's favorite food. I think I might debut it on St. Patrick's Day. So I know she had some cabbage recipes. So we might do some cabbage and some treats and stuff like that. Um, I don't know why I thought about that, but I did. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Bye, Tabby Cat. Thank you. Twice the... Uh, why pretend to care, right? <laughs> why pretend? I don't believe that you miss Shanann, Cindy. Stop it already, right? I don't believe it at all. Not for a moment. Well, you guys, you know what? I love you guys. I love all of you. And you've really certainly made a change in my life by coming to my channel and supporting me. Um, it's made all the difference. And so I have great appreciation and gratitude for you guys. And if nobody's told you this today, I'm going to tell you this because I really feel it. I love you guys a lot. Um, you're like my parasocial friends and you mean everything to me. And thank you for coming here and listening to me and joining me on this Watts Island deep dive. Please give my live a thumbs up, a heart, however you can do it in the platform. We're coming to you on Facebook, YouTube, and X. Hi, guys. And hi to everybody in the replay. Um, and I have got a bunch of things that I'm working on. And I'm super excited about them. And I'll see you next time. Okay, you guys? I love every one of you. Bye, guys.